Hey guys, it's Sam from DIY Huntress and welcome to the second project in my four project series with Ryobi Power Tools. If you missed my first project, don't you worry about it. You can check it out right here. I hope I'm pointing in the right spot. If you missed my announcement, do not miss your chance to win one of three prize packages from Ryobi Power Tools. You can enter to win by trying your hand at one of the four projects that I'm showing in this four project series. All you have to do is share the project on social media and tag hashtag sweepstakes as well as tag myself and Ryobi Power Tools in the actual post. Today's project is a really awesome retro entryway bench with a small drawer for storage. I am so excited about this build. Let's get started. If you're looking to eventually build this project, you can find free printable plans on Ryobi Nation by clicking on the link below this video. You can also find the full list of materials used for this project on my site. First step in this project was to really just mark and cut all of my pieces using my table saw. If you're looking for the dimensions that I use for this specific project, you can find those in the free PDF plans on Ryobi Nation. The bulk of this project consisted of 3 quarter inch plywood just basically cut on my table saw. To add some more character to this build and to make it feel a little more mid-century modern and retro, I decided to use my table saw to create 45 degree bevels on the tops and bottoms of both of the side panel pieces, as well as both sides of the top and bottom pieces of the bench. You'll be able to see that a lot better during the glue up, which is after I trim the boards to size. So as I just mentioned, the next step in this process was to glue up the top and bottom panels to the side panels. I lined up the 45 degree bevels with a piece of packaging tape first, and then I went ahead and added glue and just made sure to spread it out evenly. Once the glue was spread out, I went ahead and folded the two 45 degree angles together to make a 90 degree angle and then essentially raided my packaging tape collection to make sure that everything was held together securely. I also made sure to shoot a couple of pin nails into the joint as well to align everything for clamping later. And because of course I'm messy, I just used a damp paper towel to wipe away some of the extra glue squeeze out. Next up was to cut the divider that is going to be placed in the bench to create a drawer box. I went ahead and attached that divider to the actual carcass by just gluing and nailing it into the wood. I then went ahead and added the top of the bench to the rest of the bench the same way that I added the bottom of the bench. A little glue, a little tape, a little bit of pin nails, a lot of love. Once I was happy with the way that everything was attached, I used some clamps to clamp everything up super tight and left the bench to dry overnight. After getting a really good night's sleep, I came back the next morning and removed all of the clamps from the glue up. Keeping it real with you guys, at this point I was really nervous that the carcass of this bench was not going to be able to hold any body weight whatsoever, so I decided to run a couple of strength tests which involve some of my best friends in the whole wide world. Once I was confident that the bench could withstand the weight of a couple of humans and some furry friends, I then decided to go ahead and start building the drawer box. I used 3 quarter inch plywood because I really wanted to keep the cost of this build down and I had tons left over from the actual carcass build itself. I used pocket hole joinery in order to create the drawer box and I just drilled the pocket holes in the front and the back panels of the drawer box so that they would be hidden by the back of the bench as well as the drawer front. I then just used pocket hole screws and wood glue to attach the pieces together to create the drawer box. 
Once the drawer box was built, I was able to measure and cut a bottom panel out of one quarter inch plywood. I then attached that quarter inch plywood piece to the bottom of the drawer box with some wood glue and brad nails. After everything dried, I then just added the drawer slides to the drawer as well as inside of the actual carcass of the bench. Once the drawer box was installed inside the bench, I then added the drawer face to the drawer box by using wood screws from the inside. I had some full size table legs just hanging around my shop so I decided to just use my miter saw to trim them down to 12 inches tall. I decided to cut off the bottom part of the taper and keep the top so that I still had the hardware to screw into the plates. Next I just added angled plates to the bottom of the bench and then went ahead and screwed those tapered legs into these plates. I can't leave well enough alone I decided I wanted to make a custom cushion for my bench so I had some leftover scrap plywood in my shop that I cut to the size of the top of the bench. I then trimmed a piece of three inch foam to fit this piece of plywood and used spray adhesive to attach it to the plywood. Once the foam was attached to the plywood I then flipped them all over onto a layer of fabric and batting and began to upholster this bench top. Confession time, this is the first time I've ever upholstered anything and it wasn't that bad. All you have to do is do the sides first and leave the corners for last. I'm pretty uncoordinated so if I can do it then you most certainly can as well. Before attaching the upholstered top to the bench, I just sanded everything down and gave everything a really nice coat of some polyurethane to bring out some of the green and the beautiful colors in the birch plywood. After everything dried, I attached the cushion to the bench by screwing it into the bench from underneath the top panel. Next, I added the drawer handle to the drawer front by drilling a hole and countersinking the back so that the screw would fit all the way through the two pieces of plywood. And last but certainly not least, I added the back panel to the bench by attaching it to the divider and the outside of the bench with my pin nailer. And that's a wrap. Now I have an awesome little place to put my shoes on in the morning and hide all of the clutter that I find in my pockets at the end of the day. I really hope you guys loved this project as much as I loved building it. If you did and you want to see more, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy DIYing.